Dragon Con Crispy here. We're at 2018, and we've got our friend Craig. Craig, thanks for making an out, sir. My pleasure. So, you, this is like your, what, your 40th or 50th Dragon Con, I think? 55, I think. Man, you've been here longer than we've had a convention. Yeah, I so came congrats. when I was three was my first. Well, you uh, look great for first, that age, by the way. Much. What is your secret? Uh, my secret is, is placenta, no. <laughs> um, well, that took a turn, my friend. I, I don't know, I, th I think it was a friend dragged me, or dragged me to it, said, you know, yeah, I yeah, yeah. had done a couple of conventions with her, and um, she went, have you ever done Dragon Con? We go every year, and yeah. it's like, no, I've never heard of it. Yeah. And the first one, when you're a newbie and you arrive in this uh -huh. place, it was so, I just spent basically the whole weekend going, what the? <laughs> and, and I remember my first night coming down into, it was party Saturday night. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, so. back in the day. And there is, there is a woman wearing a leather bikini with chains and four men on each side mm -hmm. wearing leather bikinis right. on their on all fours kind of crawling. I went, this is a different convention than I've ever been to before. <laughs> and so it's it's lovely. I've been some, every two years trying to get back. About every so, two, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you're, you're one of the, we were talking about off camera before, you're one of those people that just kind of comes, yes, you're here for your your job to promote, and but you I see you out on the floor I just, having a great time. It's, it's a wild weekend and it's, um, it's yeah, it's just fun. And, and you get to, you know, I, th I think, Everyone who comes to regular cons, mm -hmm. the, the same thing happens for us. Is you you meet people at that con that you you see each time yeah. at the con and sort of make friendships. So it's um, it's it's great fun. I love That's it. fantastic. It's, it's the kind of thing that that, that creates a, a personal legacy of sorts. You know, you have these connections, this yeah. network. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's work, but it's so much more than that. And, and, so. it's, and this particularly this convention for me is uh, is is such an explosion of creativity across all forms you know the, right. co the costumes here are mind-blowing uh -huh. and people you see people have spent a whole year preparing oh goodness their yeah. outfits and um, For, do you do you feel like because obviously you've done some Lord of the Rings back in the day that's a huge turnout here would you say that a lot of these costumes you see like are on par with the stuff that you, you're seeing oh, on set absolutely yeah. there's oh, you know geez. there is the work I was going to say the workmanship. What, what's the uh, the, <laughs> work, roll with that. the work personship that you yeah. see in, in a lot of these things is incredible. Yeah. But I still part of me too is sorry. I'm just breaking the microphone. <laughs> um, is I, I love it when you see you know a, a two year old with a homemade pajama Spider Man. Oh outfit, yes. And <laughs> that two year old thinks they are the coolest person in the world. Because they are. They, they really are. are in that way. And, yeah, yeah. and So that kind of stuff to me is equally as exciting as the incredibly fine detail right. work. And, I, I, I'm almost a 40-year-old man myself, and I want to be that two-year-old. Yeah, when absolutely. I, I want to have that confidence, that excitement, that, like, I'm Spider-Man, that is everything. And, and it can be baggy pants that dad or mom has, like, stuck Just a Spider-Man on. Yeah, like, pop, pop the so sticker cool. on. So, I love that. So, uh, obviously, you know, you're traveling a lot. You don't necessarily get to do a lot of costumes outside of work. No. But if you were to do a costume at a convention, what kind of uh, direction would you take that? Well, if it was, if it was Ring Con, uh, Dragon Con, um, it would definitely be something light and not heavy Fair. and hot. Because <laughs> I, I, see, I see people in these incredible <laughs> outfits and just go, I know what that's like. That's yeah. not pleasant. That's no. not fun. You're just a sweaty, horrible mess underneath. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I'd go with a leather bikini. Oh, uh, fair you enough. Know, it's and then you'll have the practical. people on the chain. It's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you absolutely. can let them go sort of sometimes. And uh -huh. then you, yeah. Come back to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you love them, let, let them, let them free. <laughs> I've learned uh, some interesting lessons there. <laughs> but so, personally though, what kind of geeky stuff are you into? That's something we always like to ask here at the Dragon Con TV. My, my geek is sci-fi, so it's um, hard sci-fi. Hard sci-fi. Yeah. It's like, not so geeky, it's scientific and cool. Right, right. But, um, yeah. A hard sci-fi like Cleopatra 2525. Genius show. <laughs> How do you know about that show? Really? I love Oh Cleopatra. no, well, Web Gina Torres is actually here this year. Fantastic. And I'm sure at some point someone's going to ask her that question. I'm Brilliant. like, all right, you're Look our one fan. Look it up on the interweb. Find it on the interweb. Yeah, it's great. So what kind of uh, what is what is your sci-fi choice there for the hard so, stuff? So so Ian Banks, anything by him. Right. Sadly passed away. Um, uh, Ian M Banks, but yeah, also yeah. the Ian Banks stuff is is brilliant in its own way. Um, I've been, yeah, the, I, I like I love that idea of, and fantasy does this too, but mm -hmm. fantasy's never been sort of my thing in in literature, but. Sci-fi can posit ideas of mm -hmm. the best of humanity, the worst of humanity, right. or, or ways we could be, and and that's what I find really interesting. It's mm -hmm. a way of looking at our society now, but through a distance, through the, through the reflective lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. definitely agree. Like growing up, uh, my father was a big nerd. Obviously, he passed down. Fantasy and sci-fi was a thing. I was actually never a huge Tolkien fan. I love the world building, but the story yeah. was dry. And but, so but, they're hard. So, so they're it was hard very read. hard. You know, that, hobbits, yeah, yeah. hobbits easier, but rings is. 
it, it's a lot of singing and trees. Uh, I can't see going about. There's a whole lot of pages that are just like. <laughs> but to, to trade off, though, I went from Hobbit to Herbert. Uh, with Dune. Oh, so Dune, Dune to me yeah. is that. that okay, that's here's a question to you. So, I yeah. still think the film was amazing. Yeah, the I original. Them. I, I've got both cuts of that at home. Good. Once I, for many years, once a year, I would sit there and watch the almost four-hour cut, Fabulous. make my friends suffer through it. I've got the sci-fi did that mini. Did you yeah. watch that? And there's a director's cut of that. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. But I, I, it, I can't hate on that. So it, do you have th th that piece of literature that you're like, all right, this is my own. Um. I don't know. I, I think there's the, the, the one I want to see made is uh, um, Hyperion. There was a series yes. of Dan Simmons, I think. Yeah. Right. And I, I believe it's been optioned for a film. It has been optioned a couple times. I have times, no idea yeah. how you film that. It's, um, <laughs> That's it's, the beautiful thing about good sci-fi. Yeah. How are they going to do this? And, and often it's, it's waiting for technology to get good yeah. enough to, to kind of do it. But um, I, I, that, that, this is a fascinating thing for you mentioned technology. The, the original Dune, the Lynch Dune. Yeah. They did some incredible things with that, but. They had to work with nothing but practical effects, yes. some, yeah, some yeah, yeah. basic composite stuff. But yeah. you look at now, we have a golden age of science fiction and television and things like that. Yeah. We're able to do things. What, you've got a bit of a sci-fi role going on right now, obviously, with, with the S.H.I.E.L.D. thing going on. But personally, what kind of projects have you been on where you've been like, wow, I didn't think this is something that we could actually do? I mean, have you encountered that in your profession? Um, what I've noticed is the use of... CGI stuff, right. which, which has got so remarkably better. I still think in, if you can do something in camera, it's often better. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think when CGI is used to enhance as opposed to fully do something. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've noticed now is in everyday television productions, mm -hmm. we can use CGI. It's, it's so much cheaper and easier to render. Yeah. So d things like backgrounds, things like mm -hmm. just changing the atmosphere or painting mm -hmm. out things, that's become... That, that's become so so affordable and so easily done right that it's benefits across the board not just mm -hmm. sci-fi stuff it doesn't have that many yeah, no, sense yeah, yeah. but but i'm most that's you know if there's ever a green screen i'm still confused I mean, right so what's here and who am i and what's the tennis ball Fair and enough. basically i still don't know so how do you know day. we're not on a green screen right now guys at home i'm just saying this is the magic of theater fantastic don't jump over that rail. It's yeah. a real rail. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to get you going on your day. But before you get hey, going, so this is my buddy Randall. Hey, Randall. Randall wants to ask you a random question. He's had a, he had a rough night partying up here, by the way. So, so he's a little little freaking out. But go on. Grab a question out. This, these are supplied by our viewers. These are generic icebreaker questions. And let's see what Craig gets. No pressure. I hope my handwriting's all right. If... What's that right there? I didn't bring my glasses. Oh, right, I'm sorry. If there was a book about oh, you, what would be on the cover? If the Craig Parker story, what's on the cover of that? It would be me with a pipe, sitting in a, an easy chair by a fire, uh -huh. smoking with a glass of whiskey, looking very wise, because it would be full about how wise I am. Right. And it would be my wisdom. And it would be a huge big book. What would be your tagline for Craig's book of wisdom? Big book of wisdom. It would be the art of the deal. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've sold us on a lot today, so Fabulous. we look yeah. for his book this fall. I, it's the greatest uh, book ever. I, I, it's the greatest it's, book. It's the greatest be the, be book. the bestest I, book. The bestest, great, great, <laughs> greatest book ever. Fantastic. Well, Craig, just, I just want to thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, Chris. I'm sure I'm going to see you again at some point at the convention. But until then, I'll thank you, take sir. care of yourself, and thank you, DragonCon. Thank you, DragonCon. Thank you.